Hello and welcome back to Roll for Damage. Today I am going to show you how to craft a torch for your tabletop minis. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a quarter and trace this on the cardboard. This is a one inch square. So this will be a perfect size for our tabletop. Then I'm also going to do a nickel. Um, and the reason is I want to do a double layer of cardboard so it's like extra thick. But I wanted to give it a better three-dimensional surface. So I didn't want two of the same size layers. Um, I'm going to cut this one out. I'm going to hot glue it to this one. We'll find the center of this circle. We're going to pierce it and then the torch will sit into the base. So once I cut this out, then I'll return and we can resume. Okay guys, I cut both pieces out. I hot glued them together and it looks pretty rough right now, but that's okay because um, all this is gonna be covered. Uh, however, I did find my center. I just eyeballed it. It doesn't have to be exact to the zero degree. Um, and I also took a pen and made punched a hole in the center. That way when we put our torch stick in, uh, it has a nice little groove to sit in. Um, you could either have this where you can take it out if you'd like and you just have a little torch, or uh, hot glue it in, which is what I'm going to do. Um, so as I began to do this, um, I like to make sure that I have this first uh, and then I go back and I add the, the texturing to the actual base but before I do that I always like to make sure that I get this in place and centered um, that looks pretty uh, looks pretty straight so before I go um, and do the rest I'm gonna let this dry a little bit uh, you got to be careful with hot glue because even though the center cools and dries, if I keep applying hot glue to it, it remelts this plastic piece and it can move. I'm sorry, it remelts the, the hot glue around the actual torch stick and then it'll be able to move again. So just be careful when you're applying hot glue to anything, um, knowing that it can also come undone. So what I'm going to do now is uh, fill in the corrugation and I actually want to let the glue go down deep because I'm going to use that corrugation I'm sorry the hot glue in the corrugation for added weight because uh, there's nothing worse than your minis going all over the table being blown by people breathing heavy or somebody has a fan on or something along the lines uh, it doesn't take much for them to, to, to blow away being so small uh, so anything I can do to add that extra weight, uh, I do. Um, so I'm going to put another nice layer on top. Uh, and like I said, it's pretty thick um, because I just, I prefer that extra layer. Now I'm going to take the actual metal of the hot glue gun and make sure I have those nice clean edges that way uh, I don't have any strange little burrs or flyaways or anything get out my trusty wax paper push down on it firmly that way I make sure it's okay we're back now to texture this uh, it's only been drying maybe 15 20 seconds it's starting to hard but what I'm doing is I have a bamboo, bamboo skewer and I'm taking this and just, see it's still tacky but it's not as lucid as it was. So I'm just putting my skewer into it, piercing it and then pulling up and just moving it around. That way when it starts to harden, uh, 
and we paint this, it'll give it the actual texture where it kind of looks like mud or dirt. Um, you could even paint it where it's grass or stone. But uh, the important part is just getting that added texture. I, I put so much hot glue for weight that uh, that hot glue will round off and set more like water rather than a nice um, texture. You, you, want it, you want it to be a little spiky, a little rolly, but that's what you're looking for, something along those lines. All right, so it's hardened up good. Uh, on for the next stop, we're gonna put the flame on top of the torch. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the hot glue straight to the wax paper. And the reason I'm doing that is because it won't stick to the wax paper. And you want it to be kind of more solid, more of a gel form than a liquid state. Because I'm going to take and then dip my torch stick into it. And as I do that, it kind of pulls it up the matchstick. And I don't know if you can really tell on the camera, but since it doesn't stick to the, uh, the wax paper, it kind of pulls it off as I'm turning it. Um, and then now I have my flame attached. I'm going to pinch it at the bottom so it sticks. And we'll just give a little slight, just a little bitty pull before it hardens. Um, and voila, I got a flame. So, I mean, that's, that's, it's as simple as that. You now have a torch. However, we're going to paint it, make it look all nice and pretty, and then we'll be right back. So I just realized I had left my, I have a blower fan. I have a big blower fan that I use to cool um, the glue down very quickly or my dry my paints very quickly. So if that last little clip was loud, I apologize. Uh, so I figured what I should do is I'm going to go ahead and, and show you that uh, you put the darkest color on when you paint. You always apply the darkest color. And normally I would um, spray paint this solid flat black. However, I don't have any. I went through my last can earlier today and I just haven't gone out to get more. Um, but with this just being mud, it's not going to really affect it that much. Um, but I would prefer have to have sprayed it if I could have. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover the entire thing in a uh, dark, dark um, brown, including the actual stick all the way up to the flame, okay? So I'm gonna paint everything but the hot glue. Um, and once I do this, let it dry, I'll be right back. All right, now that we're back, this is dry. Um, we're going to do the same thing. Lost my paintbrush. We're gonna do the same thing that we did in the last video. I'm going to take just a little bit of brown and what I'm going to do is just catch these highlights. And what that does is that, that helps that three-dimensional aspect of it stand out. It makes that the darkers stay lower, the lighters up top like if it was catching daylight. And I'm not trying to do a full coverage, I'm just doing a light skim. I just want those certain raised individual pieces to stand up. Um, I hope you could tell the difference in that. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to catch the center of these poles too. I'm not going to put any extra paint because it's so small. I just want a streak or two every now and then. Um, and at the very top, we're going to do a full coat. And the reason we're doing this is once we paint this candle, I'm sorry, the flame, it'll give it an appearance that uh, it's actually given off light because the wood around the light source will be brighter and that's what you want any to add any kind of realism you can to it uh, it helps to go a long way so we're going to let this dry shouldn't take long at all 
And uh, once this is dry, we'll go back. We're gonna add some grass and finish the flame. All right, it's dry. It's got really good texture. Um, so now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a tiny bit of yellow and I, I really hate to even pour this out because I know I'm not going to need that much. So I'm just going to tip it down, dip my brush into the actual hole of the paint. And then I'm just going to put a thick layer of yellow only on the hot glue. Um, hot glue is not the easiest thing to paint. It doesn't really hold paint that well. That's why I'm putting a thick coat on. You don't want to put it so thick that when you turn it the right side uh, and set it down on the table that it drips. Uh, but you want a good generous coat. And then we're going to let that dry and then probably add another one or two more coats uh, just to make sure we have everything covered. Uh, you probably wouldn't even notice it like this after it's been painted in this way. Uh, but I like to make sure that I have everything covered. Uh, I have some glow in, in not glow in the dark, I have some lighted ones like this that I could maybe show you all how to do later on further down the road. Uh, but you could definitely tell when you don't have it fully coated with lights inside them. Um, so let's let this dry. I'm going to put another two coats. However, I need even less red. So I'm taking a very bristly brush, knocking it off, and then I'm just hitting highlights. That's pretty simple. Alright, so I'm going to wash it off. I'm going to take this same really bad bristle brush, do the same thing with green. Now, this green looks a little more neon than it really is, uh, but just keep in mind that things are going to dry darker than they appear when you first put them on. So even though it looks pretty neon, it dries almost a texture of grass. Um, and all I'm doing is just, just hitting the very, very top part, just so it looks like grass. All right. I don't necessarily want to cover everything. I just want a little hint of green. I hope you could see that. Alright, and here is our torches at work. As you can see, here's our one made of dirt, and I made one of stone. And just look at the detail. That's why I use hot glue. You, you know how hard it would be to get the detail of just painting, that randomness? At least for me anyway. So with that hot glue, it, it gives it that flame-like randomness already. So there we have it. There is our torches. Hope you enjoy it. Please like, subscribe, share. This is Roll for Damage.